So in, in forest product processing, probably the, mo the most common processing method that people understand is saw milling. And there's been various attempts at saw milling coconut over the years, and, and there's been some success in that. However, one of the, the, the deficiencies with saw milling coconut is the amount of, of material you recover through that process. So when you saw mill, you recover square boards, and during that operation, you tend to remove the outside, which would essentially become a waste product. And then throughout the process of, of, of recovering square boards, each saw cut produces a certain amount of waste, a sawdust or chip. And the end result is we recover about 35 to 40% of our original log volume into our square saw and boards. So that's potentially quite low. And unfortunately with, with saw milling, we lose a lot of that periphery during the squaring up phase. So we potentially recover only a fairly low volume or low proportion of the log volume. And we also don't necessarily recover our most attractive qualities. So looking at other processing options, we come quite quickly to veneer processing. So veneer processing traditionally uses large lays with spindles which grab the end of our log and transfer forces and spin that log up against a knife to generate rotary veneer. We've got an example of veneer in front of us here. However, with coconut, with our relatively soft centre of the tree, the traditional methods of spindles make that process quite difficult or nearing impossible. That leads us to some, some potentially new methods of veneer processing and it's the methods we're applying to this current research project. So the methods we're using is, is adopting a spindleless lay technology. And whilst that technology has been around for, for many decades, it's really only been the last five to 10 years where the adoption of this technology has, uh, has greatly enhanced and, and has allowed that technology to be developed. It relies on drive systems on the periphery to turn the log and force it up against the knife and allow us to peel veneer. So because we have no central drive system, it's a periphery drive system, we could also use logs which are a much smaller diameter than traditionally been able to use. And our central core, our waste material, which in a spindle layer can be as big as 150 millimetres diameter, we can now make that much smaller because we haven't got the spindles as a restricting element. And we can peel down our diameters potentially down to 30 or 40 millimetres. Spindles veneer lathe for example of the spindleless veneer lathe. And what, what makes this type of lathe a little, bit, a little bit unique is it uses these three rollers to provide drive to the periphery of the log. So I can so you see those rollers. So they turn our billet around and push up against what's a driven nose bar and our veneering knife. Now the force against that during during rotation forces veneer, or forces wood, or forces material through this gap and gives us our veneer sheet out the other side. So because it's a curveless cut, we don't generate waste during every saw cut, and because our waste in the centre is much smaller, we recover much more of the more attractive periphery, and overall our recovery of log volume can be as high as 60-65% comparison to sawmilling where you're down around 30, 35 and maybe 40%. So it's much more efficient and we recover more of the attractive zone.